Well, welcome to our next episode of uh, our series through 1 Corinthians. We are on episode 6 this morning, and we're looking at wearing spiritual armbands, those plastic inflatable things that we put on kids' arms when they go swimming. And just that these Corinthians are in the same thing. They are wearing spiritual armbands, even though they think they can swim. Please continue to join us through uh, 1 Corinthians as we do this twice a week. We're going to be moving the day that we release this to a Monday and a Wednesday, but we're going to continue our conversation via Zoom on a Thursday evening. So do join us with that. If you'd like to, please drop an email to info at telfordminster.org.uk because we would love to share the link to the, the Zoom meeting with you on that. So the ultimate thing in this passage in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1 to 10, it says uh, this. Let's have a look. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarrelling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, and Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God, who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they each will be rewarded according to their own labour. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. And in episode five, we looked at the, the sort of balance between wisdom that comes from the spirit and wisdom that comes from the world and Paul's hope is that the Corinthians would be people would be a church would be a, a dwelling for God that is led by the spirit and not by worldly wisdom as we continue through 1 Corinthians we'll see more and more of this develop the faction is a sort of carrying on going but Paul's hope is that they would be people that follow the Spirit's wisdom. The reality is, though, is that they aren't quite living up to the task. They keep on quarrelling. They keep on fighting about who they follow. And they don't live a life by the Spirit because they are not keeping in step with the Spirit. At school, there were a few things uh, that were a bit tricky, but one of them was academics. And, and at school, my teachers would say that, that I had all the potential to achieve high grades. And they would be written in my school reports. And that potential for high grades was, was there. The teachers could see it. Other people could see it. My parents could see it. But the reality is my achievement was low and, or non-existent in some cases. And Paul, for, for the 1 Corinthians, for the Corinthian church, he's a little bit like that. He can see their potential, but their achievement is low to next to nothing. Paul is still saying that they are living the worldly way, even though they have everything that comes from the Spirit. They have found salvation. They have found the Spirit at work in their lives and in their homes and in their churches. And I think it's a little bit the same for us, isn't it? That in our churches, we, we've come alive by the Spirit, or I hope we have. But we're still doing the things that we've always done. What can really differentiate us as Christians, as followers of the way, as Jesus apprentices? What, what really defines us? Can we see it in our actions and our words and by the things uh, we do and say? And Paul here is saying that, that the Corinthian church are still infants. 
that he wants to feed them something of substance, meat. But he's having to feed them milk and continue to feed them milk because they still haven't got it. A friend of ours has very recently in uh, this week had a baby. And you can't feed a baby steak. It just would not work. So you feed a baby milk. But if a baby was always continuing to have milk and growing up and as a four or five year old still having milk from its mother or as a teenager having milk from the mother, it would be a terribly strange thing, wouldn't it? You have to grow up and you have to eat things that are substantial in line with how old you are. And here Paul is wanting them to have something substantial, but they are not rising up to the task. We're like that too. What have we got? What have we received from Christ? What are the things we, we are doing and saying? What do we really believe by doing and saying the actions that we do? Jesus says that you'll know a tree by its fruits. Well, what are our fruits? In this time in our lives... What are the fruits we're beginning to bear? Are we overwhelmed with worry and concern? Well, what does that say about our relationship with Jesus? What is the wisdom that we're, we're sharing online or, or in other ways with our family and friends? Is that of worldly wisdom or is that that of godly wisdom? And what about our churches? Are we fighting over who's watching uh, our various social media things? Who's joining in with our churches? Are we, are we concerned about who's going where? Are we actually eating spiritual meat? Or are we on, in Paul's words, still on spiritual milk? Well, what's the main issue with the Corinthian church that makes Paul say that? Well, firstly, it's the, the jealousy and quarrelling that's going on amongst them. I follow Paul or I follow Apollos. It's the same thing that we've been tracking all the way through from 1 Corinthians now into uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 1 into 1 Corinthians 3. They've been saying how spiritual they really are, but not showing it at all. They're showing their worldly side by the quarrelling and the jealousy that's going on. Well, what does a worldly side look like well we can look at that in Galatians 5 but remember Paul has called to them and called them right at the beginning of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 to to the brothers and sisters to the church of God in Corinth to those sanctified in Jesus Christ and called to be his holy people well they're not behaving as sanctified and holy people sanctified washed made clean with what God has done with them, and holy, set apart for his purposes in Corinth. They are still arguing about all of that stuff, and they still look like ordinary Corinthians who don't know Jesus. Do you not walk like Corinthians? Do you not walk like normal human beings? It, it's actually translated as in the Greek. You are no different to the people who surround you. My hope is that we as a church will be different to the people that are just around us. That we have hope, that we have future, that we have a trajectory that's going along Jesus' way rather than just our own way. They're still arguing in Corinthians about Apollos and Paul. That they are just servants to whom they came to believe. Paul and Apollos introduced them to Jesus. I wonder who introduced you to Jesus? Maybe have a moment and, and think about that. Are you thankful for them? Have you ever shared with them how thankful you are? But remember, it's not just their work. It's the work of God in us. God makes the seed grow, not the person who, who introduced you to, to, to him. So what do we need to think about in these coming days uh, and into this evening's discussion well, how might we still be on spiritual milk and not meat? What are we doing? How are we behaving? How are we acting? That proves that we're still on milk rather than meat. What are some of the things that we uh, still have to deal with 
that the spirit of God that's in us is, is, is showing us. Maybe it's a various addiction. Maybe it's something going on in our lives. Maybe it's anger that just builds up. What do we still have to deal with? That means we can move from the milk to the meat. And I think finally, one thing we need to think of is who are we, who are we sowing the seeds into? Who are we watering? Who are we discipling to be more like Jesus? Because that's where we'll see some of the fruit. See, God is sending us out, even now with coronavirus, into the field. Into the field of the world. And we are expecting a harvest. But we need to be reaching out and sowing those seeds. So that's all I've got for you today. Please join us this evening uh, if you'd like to, to chat through some of these things. And we're going to be sharing some testimony tonight as well. Uh, if you want to do that, please email us at info at telfordminster.org.uk so we can send you the link. Uh, but please be thinking about those things through today. How are we like spiritual infants still? And what is the trajectory that God is sending us on? Have a great day and hope to see you soon.